Back to Anderson's TV, everybody. Ben Elmer, our resident metalhead, is joining me today in just about the most exciting video of 2023. I've been looking forward to doing this video for months because we're going to talk about BC Rich. BC we Rich are one. indeed. It's like, is there a more metal looking guitar on planet Earth? I don't think there is at this point. I mean, you can go from anything you've got slightly more classic, but extremely contemporary still, or you can just go all out balls to the wall, pointy, <laughs> everything that says I'm not gonna change my strings and break all the horns. Well, I'm just gonna put this awesome looking stealth model, I think it's called, back on its stand, whilst we take a little trip down BC Rich memory lane. Who knew that in 1969, so let's just put that in perspective, that's before Jackson, before yeah. Schecter, uh, before a whole host of, before ESP, before a whole host of modern, you know, classic brands that we know and love nowadays came out. Yep, BC Rich was started by Bernardo Chavez Rico. The BC Rich began. Kind of crazy. And I guess very early on, not making guitars like this, um, but in the 70s started producing guitars that, that you know, I guess shaped what we came to know and love. I should say, as a bit of sort of BC Rich background again, it, it, it's had uh, three or four different owners over the last 20 years. The most recent owner uh, has had the brand for about four or five years. And he made the decision that making, trying to make BC Rich guitars, you know, which are weird and wonderful shapes that require a high degree of sort of understanding with regards to how to build guitars. Trying to make really affordable versions of these out of the sort of the factories in the Far East that typically make affordable guitars wasn't doing anyone any favors. And so now pretty much the entire BC Rich catalog is either an American custom shop um, production, so with custom shop pricing, or the bulk of what we're looking today is coming out of the um, WMI factory in South Korea, which is generally known as being like the most capable factory in that neck of the woods at making sort of difficult to make guitars. Um, so price-wise, everything you're gonna see in this uh, video is kind of circa 1500 quid. Some are a bit more, some are a bit less, but they're all in that kind of ballpark. Um, there's one exception to that, which we'll talk about with the, there's a sort of a, a, a Stranger Things model that was made out of a different factory just to hit a slightly different price point. But most of these guitars are in that um, 1500 pound price point. And what it means is you are getting a really, really well-made, professionally specced, good quality guitar, and you're not gonna necessarily have some of those old, um, issues that I know BC Rich suffered 10, 15 years ago where they were trying to make guitars for 500 quid out of factories that weren't really capable of, of doing that. So we're gonna look at each um, family. So this idea, we're gonna start with the Mockingbird, which is one that Ben's holding. Yeah, I mean, it's probably one of the most iconic shapes, you know, between that and the Warlock. I mean, at least to me, I think a lot of people, you see this, you think of a curly haired, top hatted <laughs> person. Um, and, you know, I mean, I think what Lee was saying, I mean, it's, you look at a guitar like this, the components it's got, I mean, we're talking Tomazio deactivated pickups, you've got Floyd Rose on here, I think this is 1000 series mm -hmm. one, the various components you've got, I mean, you take a guitar like this, whether someone like Slash is using all the bells and whistles on it, probably unlikely, let's be honest, but 
to make a guitar like this, and if you were doing it like Lee was saying in that sort of £500 price point, it's not going to be the best quality. Yeah. So I think, you know, the, what... The, the guy that owns it at the moment... Bill. Yeah, yeah. Bill. He, he's pretty open saying, look, if you want to buy a cheap guitar, buy a Strat copy. Yeah. It's like, that's the guitar that the sort of the £500 factories will yeah. make well. If you want to buy like, something don't like Don't buy this. something yeah. like that at £500. So you'll obviously probably know the Mockingbird from being used by Slash. And it amazed me, I saw, I saw Guns N' Roses this summer, so summer of 2023. Mm. And I would say, I would say about 10 to 20% of the entire set Slash is using a BC Rich model. Yeah. He, he came out with about four different models over, over the set. I think in, I've seen some footage, he is even using like the Stranger Things ones as yeah, well. Yeah, some stuff. It's... But you've got a whole ton of, of iconic guitar players that have used BC Rich uh, from, you know, at one point or other in their career. We'll, we'll have some pictures on, on screen now, but, you know, we're talking Joe Perry, we're talking Paul Stanley, Gary Moore, Kerry King, obviously Slash, uh, Lita Ford, even some guitar players that you wouldn't put in this genre at all. Mm. Elliot Easton, uh, you've got back to Paul Gilbert, Chris Shiflett. It's mental. Yeah. I mean, it's literally like... It's just a who's who. Dave Mustaine, uh, Steve Vai. Steve Vai had pictured here with a double neck BC Rich. How cool is that? Rick Derringer. Um, and then right up to, you know, more recently players like Andy James and stuff. So mm. um, look at that. Joey Jordison, Mick Thompson, Nicky Six, Chris Kale. It's a real who's who of kind of, you know, iconic heavy rock and metal guitar yeah. players. So look, let's take us through uh, the features that are on that. This is yeah. the Legacy Floyd Rose model. Yep, so Legacy being basically, it's just as it should be, you know, very true of its actual time, you know, when these were coming out. Um, obviously got a lot of bells and whistles here. It's actually quite interesting, like Lee and I were saying here, the volume positioning isn't exactly how you think it would be. So you've got uh, bridge volume here which is usually, you know, a bit unconventional. Well, that's, that an e that's an ESP thing as well. So I'm guessing ESP yeah. maybe copied it. But the, the, you know, the feeling is if it's a high gain rock guitar, you're probably on the bridge pickup exactly. most of the time. So put the bridge volume in the easiest access position. Exactly. So obviously then following that, um, neck volume and then one master tone. Um, now, this is the one thing that when I initially sort of grabbed a Mockingbird for the first time, it confused the hell out of me was because You've only got a three-way switch, but you've actually got a um, a five-way sort of tone variant here. So, I mean, Lee and I are flicking through this early, so all it's going to do is essentially just darken your tone a little bit. You know, it's, it's the it's it's the type of it's the type of guitar that you would least expect to see a very tone circuit yeah. on you know but you, you hear very tone you think of old gibson semis uh bb king Something that like kind of Jerry thing, Garcia yeah, sort of where, thing. quite where it fits on a mockingbird who knows but it did <laughs> uh and then you got what are all the, the micro yeah, switches so then do? you've got a couple of micro switches here um so you've got essentially two coil taps and you've got a uh, phase invert as well which is um obviously active on the neck pickup so <laughs> when you're going into the middle position Dare I say, you can get those Gary Moore and Well, it's Peter, Peter Green, Green, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's like, but again, <laughs> look, let's, let's hear it. Yeah, we, absolutely. We're using so, a, a classic high gain rig today. So we've got guitar into a tube screamer, into a new noise suppressor that we're not allowed to tell you about until September the 14th. And then we can tell you about it. So we'll just have to update the description of this video on September the 14th into the Soldano SLO uh, 30, which sounds great. So yeah, just stand clean. <laughs> neck pick up there if you go to the middle sort of switch here first that's going to be your um cool tap for your neck pickup so that's natural as we've heard here there as a coil tap is if you then go into the bridge position that is your bridge coil tap there so And obviously if you're activating both of them and you want to sit in the middle position, you can get really spanky there. As it should be. And then comes the fun part where you've got the, the phase invert. So obviously that's the bottom switch there. 
super, super honky. But come on, <laughs> press the red button. I'm gonna say you're not on the bridge, gonna be humbucker. using it for that. Is that with the tube screamer or without? That's not, so that's just straight pedal into the out. I'm not even, I, I haven't even got the noise suppressor on at this point. Oh really? Well, okay, so. Give it, go noise suppressor, tube screamer and full tube. Right, let's do it. So just for full disclosure, that's set up kind of as a metal guy, how I'd have it. So not a lot of gain, just using it to curb some low end. And, it, and it's not a tube screamer. It's the uh, it Origin FX Halcyon Green tube screamer clone. <laughs> So we need to hear Ben play a bit more of that and, and perhaps whilst he's playing a bit more, we'll show you some pictures on, online of the other. There's, there's like more than 20 different variants of the Mockingbird. So within the Legacy series, you can get this guitar with or without the Floyd Rose. Um, if you buy the hardtail version, it's like an integrated bridge and tail piece. Everything else is the same. We must show people actually the back of the yeah. guitar. Um, it's, a, it's a real big part of, of the sort of the BC Rich thing. They were one of the first companies ever apparently to make through neck guitars and 24 fret guitars yep. back in the day. Uh, but beautiful, beautiful piece of workmanship here. That's why I said as well, not many factories can do this whole through neck. You need the bigger um, CNC machines and more expertise with woodworking and stuff and carving, but uh, very cool. So yeah, you can get that with or without the Floyd Rose. My favorite is the Koa. Um, with the Floyd, that for me, when I think of the Mockingbird, is the iconic kind of 70s model with the cream pickups. Mm. So that's all within the Legacy series. And then if you move into the Extreme series, that's where they start to go for a more modern vibe with yeah. the Fishman pickups and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we'll put pictures of all those on screen now whilst Ben maybe plays through. Price-wise, the hardtail version of that starts at 1249 and then by the time you're up to the sort of extreme stuff, you're at sort of 1600. Uh, and of course you can go into the custom shop if you want to, there's bass guitar versions of yeah. this. But yes, go on, have a, have, a, have a little, any just chug anything away. <laughs> That's the Mockingbird. Uh, again, dive on over to the website, uh, Anderton's website, to find out what's in stock. If it's not in stock, if it says pre-order now, again, click through to the main image. It'll tell you when we expect to get our next delivery. Uh, but I think the entire Mockingbird range uh, is either on order or in stock at Anderton's. So anyway, let's choose the next one. <laughs> Okay, uh, for absolutely no reason whatsoever, I, I actually don't know chronologically what order <laughs> all these BC Riches kind of came out, but we're looking at the Iron Bird now, um, a slightly simpler, smaller range than Mockingbird. So you can go Legacy, 
which uh, comes in two models, either a single pickup Kayla loaded version of this. That's so that's cool. super like <laughs> 70s and 80s, isn't it? Uh, which interestingly, the, there's a signature artist called Eric uh, Rutan, 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 uh, Rutan, Cannibal Corpse, um, amongst other projects. He has a legacy version, which does have two humbuckers and a Floyd on it. Uh, but the most of the Ironbird range is from their Extreme series. So these are going to have uh, Fishman uh, loaded, a um, couple of other features like the kill switch and stuff. But do you want to take us through some tones, show us the yeah, front Yeah, absolutely. The I mean, um, the thing with Fishman pickups is you're not going to pick up this guitar and do lots of clean stuff, you know. <laughs> it is. So these are the Fluence Moderns. Um, so what you're getting is single volume knob, but it, it has actually got a push-pull on it as well. And what that's going to do, I'll take you through some tones, it's basically between a modern active kind of voicing and then you've got a uh, passive kind of voicing in the up position. So you can hear it a little bit better on clean, so I'll do that now. So this is down, it's modern. Very tight in the low end. It's very snappy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And then when I think they, they're ceramic as well, so when you then pull it up, just a little bit more spongy in the low end there. Um, so if you're doing anything heavier, for that stuff, you're gonna want the modern voicing, but then if you're doing some slightly sort of more 80s rock stuff, maybe the passive suits it a little bit. And then everyone's favorite part of this guitar has got to be the kill switch. Not that I know how to use one, but... I, I got, again, look, I, I, as everyone will know watching uh, this channel, I, I'm not kind of into that style of, of guitar. Yeah. But when I've played guitars with a kill switch that's actually a switch, it's so awkward to use. Yeah. The, the sort of the games console button as a kill switch is just infinitely better. They misplaced uh, and sure, a lot And probably of the time. more reliable as well. Yeah, well, they, they're misplaced a lot of the time. So they're always in a place where it's either like down here where you can't access it, whereas at least here, you're gonna be like riding the volume knob or something there, so it's easy access if you yeah. are doing something like <laughs> Man, uh, quick before we go on to the next one, show them the back. Um, and I will tell you that these are all in and around that sort of 1600 pound mark. That's so clean. Okay, uh, this next guitar needs no introduction. It's, of course, the Warlock. Um, is it the most famous or the second most famous BC Rich I, shape? Is that, yeah. that and the Mockingbird are probably the two uber iconic ones. Yeah. What kind of players have played that over the years? I mean, you, you go back to like old school Slipknot days, Mick Thompson, he was one of the sort of the OGs, if you will, of that kind of the Warlock thing. Um, obviously, Joey Jordison in Murder Dolls, he was using one for a while as well. I do believe that actually the bassist of Five Finger Death Punch is using a Warlock bass at the minute as well. He is? Um, I think You're his right. signature one is a Warlock. Um, yeah. Actually, and that, that's, again, we'll have to do the basses, I think, yeah. in a, in a, with our bass crew in a separate video. But yeah, I mean, that, that Five Finger Death Punch is just massive over the last few years. They've no, almost no. become like ambassadors of the brand. Well, but, the, yes, yeah, of course, because you've got Andy James playing uh, BC Rich as well now. Yeah. Uh, but yes, 
monster. All right, well look, Yeah. very similar feature set to what we had on the Iron Bird. If we flip it, let's flip it now, show people the... Looks uh, great. And, and you mentioned as well that that's in a satin finish. Yeah, so this is actually a satin finish as well, um, which is actually really comfortable. It, especially up close, it gives it a bit more of a sort of sleek look as well, particularly with the neck through. It's just, it's crafted amazingly, to be honest with you. Um, and again, spec wise, you're going to get, you know, exactly what you had on the Iron Bird. We've got Fluence Moderns, Active and Passive, and Kill Switch as well. No bells and whistles, it's just meant to sound nasty. I'm surprised the current BC Rich range uh, only has the um, the Warlock in the extreme range, so it mm. is the sort of slightly more modern features. The only way you can get something slightly more old school is to go down the Stranger Things route, um, which, isn't it mad? It seems like, it, I can't believe where the last year has gone since yeah. we were all completely mental about Eddie and Stranger Things. <laughs> So there were two versions of the yeah, Stranger Baltimore Things well. model. Yeah, they, this was the one where they did use um, a more affordable factory. So they hit, uh, these guitars came out at about 800 quid and were a, a little bit more conventional with a slightly lower grade Floyd and just BC Rich own brand pickups on it. Uh, or you could go custom shop and then it really was a throwback to the original um, Warlock design with the Kayla trim on it. And we still have a handful of both the custom shop and the uh, regular version. The regular version now only in black, the custom shop version I think only in the red crackle. Yeah. Uh, but look, take us through some tones on the, uh, on the Warlock Extreme. <laughs> Love it. Okay, this is a quick one now. So this is the War Beast. Um, how is the War Beast different to the Warlock? Because sort of, it's sort of immediately looking at it, yeah. they're obviously derived from a very similar shape. So it, it's to do with the, the horns. So if you, I mean, it's easy to kind of see, obviously from the front, I mean, if you've got the Warlock there, they sort of protrude slightly outwards. Um, this is very much a standing up guitar. <laughs> um, you know, it's pretty extreme. It's Mega comfortable, I've got to say. They play absolutely amazingly. Um, they, they've got a pretty sure it's a 14 degree radius on it, so it's not over the top, you know, super, super flat shred like you'd find on something maybe like an Ibanez. So it is actually relatively comfortable to play, um, particularly if you're pl you, someone like me playing Gibsons where you're used to a 12, but you know, they just play. <laughs> I've just spotted, of course, it's the three-a-side headstock, isn't it? As opposed to a six-a-side yeah. on, on the Warlock. So that's, but that's probably a, 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 a visually gives it a different kind of vibe as well. Yeah. Well, look, like Ben said, what, what's been really, really pleasing for me is just to see BC Rich back building such high-quality yeah. guitars. Uh, you know, we, we, I can remember, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, it, you know, as a, as, a, as a retailer kind of dealing with a, the BC Rich distributor and, and, and it being sort of painful sometimes, you know, getting the really cheap guitars that have been made out of the really cheap factories and just going, oh, it's such a shame, you know, it's, it's like not the vibe of this guitar. I think actually, I keep looking at the prices sort of going, it doesn't feel too bad. I think now, you know, for, for that sort of top end Far Eastern stuff with all the spec that you're getting on these, through neck, branded pickups, all that kind of stuff, you know, round about the 1500 mark. I think if you look at things now, the way everything is, yeah. you know, in the world, it is, it's a pretty reasonable price for yeah. what you're actually getting on the guitar spec wise. I think what as you're well. like as well, when you get it, it feels like £1,500 worth of guitar. Yeah. You know, like the, the detail, the through neck, the build quality is really exceptional. It's everything, like even how they're finishing like the binding, you know, you, you've not really got any bleed or anything like yeah. that. It is really yeah. articulate and down to the T. We, we should say as well, uh, what 
Andertons does. Uh, our relationship with BC Rich is such that we're buying these guitars direct from the factory. So every single one goes through a full QC process at Andertons. We're checking for uh, any kind of imperfections, damage, making sure the setup's perfect, making sure it's all good. So they re we, we really do, every single one gets properly inspected. There's only two models in the uh, War Beast range and they're the same guitar, one in a matte black finish and one uh, in the Spalted Maple. So, I mean, I guess, you can, you can play for 20 seconds whilst again. we show them both on screen. <laughs> and once again, guess what? It's neck through. <laughs> yeah, is there any that aren't neck through? I'm pretty sure, other than the, um, the Stranger Things ones. The, the cheaper uh, Strange Things ones, yeah. I think uh, even the, um, the, the, I suppose the core one is bolt on as well. No. Yeah. What, the, the custom shop one yeah. is bolt, because that would have been the correct legacy. Yeah. Wow. It's Who still knew? got the recessed cutaway in it, so you can get higher fret access, but it is still a bolt on. Fair enough. <laughs> This is the guitar that I chose for that opening jam and there's something sort of again really old school and simple about this. So we're talking about the uh, the Stealth. Again there's only uh, three versions of this in the B-series range. I don't know which one came first. It kind of reminds me of like a Jackson Star. So it's yeah. although it's pointy it's got a really soft radius on all the edges so it's got a sort of a um, it's like a really pointy Jackson Warrior meets like a Strat or something. It just has all the sort of edges kind of. So it's got, it's got a much more fluid rather than angular sort of look to it. Yeah. Um, and again, very simple, simple design. You want to take us through the yeah, features? Yeah, and... absolutely. So, yeah, so again, it's just a really stripped back guitar. Um, so it's got a, a BC Rich quad hard tail on it. Um, sort of their, their stance on this is that it, it does enhance the tone slightly. Um, it's got sustain for days, I've got to say. Yeah, it's obviously a proprietary part. It's the same bridge yeah. that's on the Hardtail Mockingbird, but you can see they've got much sort of chunkier saddles and, and the whole the whole actual bridge and tailpiece is quite a lump of metal, isn't it? I can yeah. imagine, you know, you do, it is fair to say, you know, you the, how you build the bridge on a guitar definitely affects string sustain 100%. Um, and sort of meatiness. So that does look um, like a kind of Super meaty comfortable look. as well. You know, the saddles aren't sharp or sticking out, so you can rest your hand on there. If you're doing any tremolo picking, it, you know, it's not going to dig into you or anything mm. like that. Pickup wise here, um, we're sporting a set of Demacio, so we've got a deactivator in the neck and we've got a distortion in the bridge. Just a single volume knob, no tone because who needs tone? Um, <laughs> Three-way selector and you can coil tap as well if you do want to get some glassier sounds or even some just spankier riff sounds. What is also interesting about this one is the, the way the neck joins onto the body. So what we've got here is a neck through. Um, now, a few differences here between something like this and a through neck. Yeah, yeah it's a great so, choice of words, isn't yeah. it? Through neck being, it, this is all made of one piece of, uh, well, obviously, as you can see, it's made of five pieces of wood, but essentially this just carries on. It's cut from one piece and neck through like so is the traditional neck through is basically where the neck is glued into the body so we have a maple neck onto an older body here but the joint is sculpted in such a way as it looks like a through neck but it is still two pieces of wood so that's neck through whether that makes a huge difference <laughs> to the tone or not i mean you can argue that for days but it's obviously a slightly more affordable um, construction method uh, and that reflects in the price because the Stealth is one of the more um, affordable BC Rich models. Yeah, um, and again, it's just a maple neck onto an older body, so it is a really nice lightweight. It's like you get with guitars of this kind of shape, it is really well balanced. You know, it's not neck diving in my lap or anything like that. It's just really comfortable so, and fun to play. So whilst Ben plays and you see the three different models that are available, um, 
They're, they're basically all, again, from the uh, Legacy series. So you've got this one, you've got a Spalted Maple one, and then you have got a signature mm. guitar. Uh, I can't say I'm super familiar with this uh, guy, and he passed away a, over 20 years ago, but Chuck Schuldiner from the appropriate named metal band, Just Death. That was it. It was like they, they, met, they, they got the name in before anyone they else did. got the name, didn't they? So it's just the simplest, most hardcore name of all time. Anyway. And I'm not going to play any death riffs. <laughs> Onto the Shredzilla now, we're on the home straight. We've only got one more style of guitar after this to show you, I think. Um, Shredzilla is the, the, the style of guitar, I suppose, that most brands are gonna do, the super strap kind of, you know, double cut kind of vibe. Um, it's a massive range. There's about 40 different models here from six, seven, eight strings, some with hardtailed Evertune bridges, some with Floyd, some with fan frets, some with hip shot. I mean, it's like giganto. So again, when Ben plays out, we'll, we'll list all those, you know, we'll show you pictures of all those. You can dive on over to the website to see. What is it for you though, if you take the Shredzilla versus say, you know, Ibanez RG mm. or, or um, M or H series ESP or you know that kind of vibe. Yeah. What what is it that you think maybe B C Rex do like slightly differently? A few things. I mean, first thing that comes to mind as soon as you put the guitar in your hands, you've got what B C Rex are calling their Shredzilla neck profile. Um, I'm actually, I, I, full disclosure, I'd never played a Shredzilla before this video. Played plenty of other brands like Ibanez, RGs, whatever over the years. What was interesting about this is it's not paper thin, so actually it's a little bit more comfortable. Um, whether you can call a neck versatile or not, I would personally argue it is. Um, it's great as well. The horns are actually, they seem to be slightly larger on it, so in terms of getting up a fret access, a lot of the time people think it's to do with the sort of lower end, but actually, you know, getting on the base side of things, you want to be able to get up there still. Um, and the horns on that with the neck profile are really helping. The body itself is, it's going to be hard to show on the camera, but from where we're sitting, it's got a lovely, nice little sort of arch top to it, which, you know, on the finish that I've got here and Lee's got next to him there, with the sort of the burl top finish and the natural wood, it actually really helps it pop mm. out as well. Um, it's, it reminds me, I think it's like a softer arch than something like a Jackson soloist, but just that little... Um, curvature that just goes around the edge yeah. especially in the lights any all the gloss finishes it really makes the finish pop it's it pretty. makes it feel much more premium i yeah. think you know in, in terms of the, the price point that it's going to be targeting you know when you've got a finish like that it's gloss as well which is nice so it's you know it's going to have retain that sort of look to it it just feels amazing um again on Flip this it. let's have a let's have yeah. a look because i mean again not many brands do the whole through neck kind of thing. It is a super premium price. Again, I think Jackson with the Soloist is a kind of, is a through neck. That would be another interesting one. Which came first, Soloist or Shredzilla? Yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're you know, be beautifully made. Sorry, you, I, yeah, you were it's, saying. It's, uh, it's interesting as well. Obviously we've got Floyd, so we've got a locking nut. And we've actually got the locking tuners on it as well. So, I mean, as most people know that <laughs> It can take a bit of a while to mm. restring. It's actually, you know, it helps with sort of getting stuff done a little bit quicker, especially if you're on the fly or I, do you know, or whatever. Do Because I, I suppose you've got a choice there as well. If you, you know, you you could just not have the nut locked. Yeah, and you still you, get some benefit of the of the locking tuners. Wouldn't yeah, you? exactly. Um, so it is kitted out to make. I mean, the detail on on the fretboard, the sort of the binding again, it's just absolutely stunning and well, unique look, as well. I mean, if you want to try. You know, there's like a bucket load of different Shredzilla ones and we're not going to go through them all in this particular video. But if you want to hit the website, you'll see what we've got in stock and, uh, and you know, when, when it's coming if we haven't got stock. 
Um, let's have a quick little demo on this, but we'll do the main demo on, on the seven string. It's got yeah. this really interesting, I think that's some kind of ebony fretboard, uh, but like a really pale kind of Macassar. I'm gonna even look it up for you whilst you're playing, but give us a few Yeah, so on obviously, this. like Lee said, spec-wise, these are kitted out to the max with various options. The one that I've got in my hands here has a set of Demarcios in it. Um, again, we've got master volume, master tone. Um, you can pop the tone knob out for some coil taps as well. So I'm just gonna give you a few quick tones on some gain here as well. Just super spanky, it's really nice great. that is. So we're gonna do a slightly extended playing piece on the seven mm -hmm. string. That is called Royal Ebony. Um, anyway, all the specs and details will be on our website. Uh, but yeah, sit back and listen to Ben play this whilst uh, dozens of pictures of different Shredzilla models go past the screen. <laughs> man just out of interest a little bonus clip for you here let's do the same thing without the mystery noise suppressor that's on the floor uh and uh see if it sounds as tight or as clean or if my playing does <laughs> So anyway, anyway, this is a new noise suppressor that we will be able to announce uh, middle of September. Check the description below, it's pretty cool. We'll do a separate video of that as well. So what comes in a case as enormous as this? Let's find out. Oh, <laughs> if that isn't a piece of just classic rock guitar history, there you go. Oh now, wow. This is the double neck version of a model called the Rich B. Uh, we don't have the six string single neck version at the moment. So you have to sort of imagine that, or again, we'll show you some pictures. I kind of feel that this particular model has been a slight victim of the cancel culture over the last few years, as it used to be called something else, um, which doesn't seem that offensive to me, but there we are. It's now just called a Rich B. Um, and as you can see, you've got a control panel here, which is sort of slightly reminiscent of what we saw on the Mockingbird. I love how they've done the 12 string element mm. of this. I think it's, you know, they, they may have just done it for the, for, the, for the look, but as a design feature, by not having to have 12 tuners on that top headstock, you've avoided that it's ludicrously long, <laughs> yeah, like that crazy long headstock that most 12 string guitars have to have whether it's how long it takes to sort of get used to tuning it. So you've got the, what have you got? The, you've got the octave strings yeah, that's, down the so bottom. Yeah, these are the octave ones, yeah. 
I mean, okay, so there are half a dozen um, Rich B models in the range. You've got the six string has got a Floyd or a hardtail version, uh, and then the uh, double neck one has got this beautiful, uh, there's a beautiful Koa version of this, or you can get a plain white or a red, uh, the red one that we've got now. So yeah. is that a double through neck? Yeah, like if you it flip is. It, that is, I mean, I we, we, we talk about finding factories that have got the capability to make guitars like this. And it's like, yeah, not many. Um, so, well, let's plug it in and let's hear. Yeah. I mean, I kind of feel... You, you've, you've either got to play some sort of classic Guns N' Roses 12 string to 6 string kind of tune or you've got to play Wanted Dead or Alive or I mean, something. Just noticing what's interesting is actually the angle of this because like I mean I'm used to seeing someone sl like Slash play the Guilds or something like yeah. that and they're usually quite sort of symmetrical. Well, you mean the necks are quite straight yeah. than these have got Whereas the necks kind of splaying apart sort of slightly. Splaying apart, which is really interesting actually but yeah let's uh Give it a quick is tune it heavy? up. It's not as heavy as you'd think it would be. Um, I mean, well, I know that, for example, like the Mockingbirds are a mahogany body. Um, I can look it up for it's you. It's worth looking and having a look to see what. Obviously, it's the the through neck bit of it is. So it's it is a mahogany neck uh, with a mahogany body. Wow. Yeah. It's actually surprisingly. Obviously, light. it's a five piece neck. I think, isn't it? So you've got these. Um, yeah. I think is it bits of Wengi or something like that, but oh, it's wow, wow. It's even got a 12 string version of their quad bridge. <laughs> and these are Seymour Duncan, Duncan designed HB 103 humbuckers on this one. So you've got, uh, <laughs> shall I tell you the controls or are you just gonna work it out? No, I think, I've, I, think I know where, we are, where we're at, so. I mean, it's looking like the 12 string controls are those top ones. So you've got yeah. two volumes, a tone, and a three position uh, a three position pickup switch. So here, here, and here, and this yeah. are here. This is then, do you want just the 12 string, a blend of the 12 string and the six string, wow. or just the six string? Uh, then you've got <laughs> the pickup control for this. Yeah. Your same two volumes and a tone, your same coil taps and uh, phase inverter, and your vary tone circuits so just for the six string. Wow. So it really is two guitars in one. Here, what I'm going to do first is just take you through some tones on the, I suppose, the 12 string side of, <laughs> of things. Um, so obviously, it means this switch here is only activating this section of the guitar. So here's the neck pickup. And then obviously, what's the action like for a 12 string? It's actually really nice because it looks it, is, it looks like a standard electric guitar neck width. Yeah, so it is. It's not obviously it's the strings will be pretty close together, but it should pretty, be easy to play. Yeah, it's easy to play. Like it's not like, like I've always struggled playing 12 string acoustic. Mm. It's nothing like that at all. Um, so then middle position, both pickups. Bridge pickup. There's an interesting, I was at Bernie Marsden's house many years ago. And he had a double neck like this that yeah. I want to say it was a Gibson, you know, the, the, the SG double neck thing. Yeah. Do. And he would leave the 12 string neck on, so on the yeah. pickup sector, the bit, but only play the six string. And you got these really interesting drone notes off the 12 string that were just picking up of the vibrations of the six string. Really? Yeah. Hey, you have to go and find that video. It was a few years ago up at Bernie's house. But um, I don't know if you'll get that, but yeah, so if you play just the, the six string Yeah, now. so we'll go just to the six string yeah. now. So again, um, neck position for the six string. And then again, both humbuckers. I, 
think that's another standing up guitar. It, it I think by the time it's on your lap, you, it looks like some sort of 80s jazz I've fusion I've thing, I've never felt so alien. <laughs> <laughs> like, you I, need to watch Slash playing this kind of guitar to realise how you look cool playing this kind of guitar. Yeah, so. even the eight string felt more <laughs> comfortable <laughs> to me than this. So here's the bridge pickup. So I'm, I'm going to challenge you here, Ben. I want you to do a clean opening riff on the 12 string and then switch to a heavy sort of... So like like it, like uh, knocking on heaven's door yeah. or something like that. Let's see if the brain can coordinate switching necks, pick up positions and putting a pedal on all at the same <laughs> time. Let's see if it can be done. Oh, right. The answer's no, but... <laughs> thing let's see if we can do the drone note thing yeah so put it in that middle position everything on humbuckers or whatever right. but just go high gain and riff on the six string neck and just see if So what I switched there was, I switched it at one point to only hearing the 12 string. Yeah. And even though you aren't playing, noise is coming out. Yeah. So I, again, whether that was good noise or bad noise is subjective, but it is, it is an interesting one. And I, I can't remember what Bernie played. Obviously he wasn't playing anything quite as heavy as that, but he was playing stuff where again, the drone notes underneath really added something desirable to, yeah. the, to the sort of the, the vibe of the sound. Well, look, that is a cool looking <laughs> yeah. guitar that every rock, every sort of inner rock star in you would love to bring out for one song, wouldn't they? Just like, because Even it's my so inner awesome. metal head wants to. <laughs> I agree. Well, look, well that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of our sort of BC Rich video. Um, I'm sure you've seen a guitar, uh, you know, throughout this video in, you know, scrolling along the bottom that you're interested in. Uh, and you'll have to come to the store to try those because we haven't got enough time to, to feature them all in the videos. I'm sure we'll revisit uh, BC Rich videos again in the future. Yeah. I know we'd love to get Andy James back on Definitely. to talk about uh, what he's doing with BC Rich. Um, get the whole band in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I definitely, definitely, when we get some hardtail mockingbirds, I guarantee I'm going to use one of those in the video because that's probably my favourite guitar. But yes, thank you so much for sticking with us. Um, thank you, Ben. Uh, ben, no you're going to see, you've already probably seen in a few videos, I should say to Ben, we only really even asked Ben to come in and sort of just try out for a few videos before just to see you know how he got on and they were so good we decided to put them live anyway which is why you've maybe seen ben on his own in a couple of videos uh but yes ben uh ben actually works in our guitar department here's our guitar department manager so if you want to come in and ask ben questions do that in the store as well but uh, yes thank you ben thank you for watching no um we're now going to try something ridiculous <laughs> uh and we'll see you in another video soon au revoir two three four <laughs>
I felt I was uncomfortably close to bending. <laughs>